Okay, we're going to start off with command 101. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in the command. And we can do that by going to agent.kw.com and entering in our username and password. Once we will once we log in, we'll be brought to our home dashboard here and we'll see whatever tasks we have here. We can see our goals for next year, we can see our database health, the latest product updates, and we even have a notepad that we can use here. On the left hand side, we will see all these different icons. These are all called applets. Okay. And if we hover over each one, we can see what the uh you'll see that the pop-out shows what it actually is. Also, if we click on the KW, this will pop out and we'll see exactly again what, what printed right next to it, what each applet is. It's a little bit easier to see. So if we click on the KW, it opens and collapses that. On the top of our screen, we'll see KW command, or command here and connect. And uh, connect will be, it's not quite fully done right now, but this would be where the new KW connect or connect next as they kind of called it, will be launching um, as it continues to grow here. We're going to stay within command at this point, and I just want to show you a couple more icons here. If you have a team, you will see the, op the option to select a team here. This icon right here is the marketplace. These are third-party applications that we can connect to uh, command, and we'll go through one of them. And then we uh, will see our notifications tab, so we'll see any notifications that we have. Over here on the right hand side, all the way over here on the question mark, when we click on that, we will see uh, education and um, opportunities to get support. So you'll see Keller Williams University here. You'll see the opportunity to chat with support and the option to post an idea. It's also ideas.kw.com. And I'm just going to click an X to get back out of that. So if I click on my name here, I will get a drop down here that will show some of the different options here. So again, we see command training and we see the marketplace, which is the same here. We also will see the settings and the profile. We're going to start off by clicking on the profile. Once we're on this page, we can click edit profile on the top right hand side here. And this will give us the opportunity to edit all the information on here. You may notice some foreign characters on here. That's a little bit of a glitch at this point but if you uh, you can either delete, try to delete them sometimes it will save sometimes it will not or you can put items over it when you're done with this click save changes and that will save all the changes in your profile and then we're going to come back and we're going to click on your name and we're going to click on settings again and then we're going to work on your mobile apps or your apps that are connected with command and your marketing profile. Okay, what we'll see on this page are all the integrations that are directly integrated with command here. So we'll see items like DocuSign. If you haven't set up your account, that's something that you need to do. PySync will allow you to sync your contacts from more than 150 applications. If you'd like to schedule posts on your Facebook business page or your Twitter handle, you can connect those by using these options here. Also, you want to make sure that you have the MailJet option connected because this is going to be the reply to email address for the monthly neighborhood nurture campaigns at this point. Uh, there is an eEdge contact. You, should, you can try that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. We have the Google Calendar and the Gmail options here. Uh, the Gmail will sync your email interactions with your database, which will also happen if you'd used Office 365. At least that's the intent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. With Twilio, that allows you to send SMS messages or text messages to your database once you've enabled and created an account. Um, if you do choose to use, if you do choose to use Twilio, go and buy a local number from, directly from them and help have their support team help you have that local number not only um, work so that it'll go to your cell phone if somebody calls it, but it will be your new text number. If you're doing any paid advertising on Facebook ads or and or Twitter ads or Google AdWords, you can connect the accounts and have the option of running the ads directly through command. I've been seeing a lot of people that have been doing Facebook ads getting phenomenal results on them.
For email campaigns, should you decide there is a MailChimp integration, MailChimp has recently changed their plans, so it may make it uh, expensive. It really depends on the amount of contacts and how you intend to use it. So these are the uh, app options here. Once you've connected all your apps, come over here to Connect Settings and click on Marketing Profile, and we'll go through your marketing profile. Okay, once you're here and you're updating all your information, you want to make sure to click Use This Information to Brand My Site, and so that you get the little green option here. When you're filling this out, you also want to make sure that your pictures are the right size, otherwise they won't render properly. And you'll have to fill this all out prior to doing this. So I would suggest you fill it all out, come to the bottom and click Save. If you have any of your Facebook links or anything like this, you want to make sure that you have the HTTPS here. And it's the same thing for the branded app link, because those will be important in other areas. Uh, you can fill out a legal footer here. And if you don't have a bio, just put coming soon. And this will help you fill out all the information for your phone, uh, for your, for your uh, marketing profile. When you're up here in the mobile phone and office phone, if you put a phone number in here, do not put dashes. It is okay to put dashes here because when it pulls it from the website, the dashes will transfer over properly. Otherwise, it will not look proper if you put the dashes here. So when you're done, just come down to the bottom, come click Save, and then I would go back up and click on this, and then it would make it so that this will use this um, stuff to brand your agent site. The next area we're going to talk about is under contacts and under command settings here. We're going to talk about both custom tags and custom fields. If we click on custom tags here, we will have the option to add any kind of tags that we'd like here. And we can simply go in the right hand corner and click on create a new tag. We can type in a name of whatever that we want that tag number, tag name to be, such as this is like what groups would have been in eEdge. We can assign a color to it and we can click Create, and this will be a custom tag that we have available. Now you'll notice that we have both contacts for, um, or custom tags for contacts and opportunities, and some of the um, options and opportunities might be for, for doing uh, REOs, short sales, luxury, land, New construction, those are some tags that come to mind for uh, custom tags for opportunities. Now, the next option we have is the custom fields. So in custom fields, we see we have this option to create a new custom field. We have the option, if we check this box down here, that will make it a custom field, and we can select the custom type field. Now, the difference between a text field and a text area, a text area is larger. I think the rest of them are pretty much self-explanatory. Let's give, let's use an example here. If I was to do a text area, I'm going to make it default, and I'm going to use Ford, right? Family, occupation, recreation, and dream, and this will make this a default item whenever we go to edit a context, so we'll be able to easily edit the information. If we just click Create, that will create the new tag for us. So those are the different custom fields and custom tags. I want to show one other one that I've used, and that is what we call the drop-down. So let's just say I have one and I want to do county, because I'm going to track which county they live in. And I can add the drop-down options right here, and I can keep adding as much or as many or as little as I want. And then I can say, hey, I want to keep this as a custom default field. All right, another uh, popular one would be for, for our area, might be township. But in this case, I'm not going to have a list of all the townships, so I'm just going to put a text field in the area. And I'll do it one more time for PIN number. And what this does is this is an easier way to keep track of when somebody's uh, taxes might be up for evaluation. If you have their township and their PIN number, it's very easy to make a call to them and say, hey, by the way, I know your township is open for taxes. Uh, have you thought about looking, checking your valuation? And, and it's a lot warmer of a call than some other calls that can be made.
So we just click Create, and that will allow us to create those fields. Okay, and the next section we're going to look at is the Contact section, which is going to be the second icon down. If we click on that, that's going to bring us to the, the Contacts applet. And we'll notice that on the right top right-hand corner, there's an Import option. If we click this Import option, we will get a pop-up that will allow us to upload a custom CSV. However, you need to use the correct CSV file, which is available by clicking on Download right here, and that will download the proper CSV in the format that you need to upload into Command in order to get that working here. Once we're in the Contacts section, we can search for contacts. We can also choose whether or not we're searching contacts, leads, or recruits, and this is a newer, newer option here. We also have smart views that we can that we can manage right here and or see. So for example, if I do a filter and I want to do just people that are have a specific tag. So let's just say I pick KW Palatine agents, I can click save smart view and this should save it as a smart view and then it should be available what i'm noticing is that when one does this now in this case it did save it so what we'll notice is that we have the smart view here so we'll, and that will keep those filters uh, available if we need to customize the columns, we can come over here and we can click on this and we can choose what items we want to show here. And then we click Apply and that will change uh, the items that show, that will show. If I wish to sort, I can click over here and then click on first name or last name and that will easily sort them um, by those different options there. Uh, there also is a, there's a list view and a grid view here that will let you see them a little bit easier. So it's a little bit easier sometimes to see the information um, in this view as opposed to the, the different columns that are here. By default, typically we're showing 10, so you may need to click this to show more, whether it's 25 or 50. Note that for smart plans and activating smart plans, the most people that you can put on, on a smart plan at this time is 25. So I'll just go down to 25 to show this next example. Anytime you select one or more contacts, you will get an option here, a bulk action. This will allow you to do different items here. So for example, I could add a note to all these contacts. I could archive them, which is the first step prior to deleting them. I could add bulk tags. I could send a bulk SMS. Now you will need to have Twilio activated in this. Uh, you could add to an email list in MailChimp. I'm not sure anyone's using this right now. I could share this with, if I had a team, I could share this with the individual team members. I can mark the people as leads, unmark as leads. I could add to a smart plan. I could export them or I could export mailing labels. So these are the different bulk options I have. When I select, you see I don't have any contacts selected now, so I don't see it. But as soon as I select one or more contacts, those options will appear for me. Now when we get ready to add a contact, we can come over here in the top right-hand corner and click Add Contact and we can add in all their specific information that we're looking for. What we'll notice is that when we have an individual contact in here, they will have a database health score. So in this case, the database health score is 64%. But when we go and we add a contact, the different information that we put in there increases their score. So we'll walk through inputting a contact. So I just simply click Add Contact in the top right-hand corner. I can add in their email, and I can walk through the whole process here. If I have tags, I can add the specific tags that I've already created prior to that. And anytime I have a drop-down menu in command and I don't want it, if I just click on the arrow, that'll suck it up. I'll see there's opportunities to add more additional contact information. So one of the things that I have here is address. So as I start to type in the address, what I'll notice is that we'll have different options that pop up here. We want to make sure that we cl we can uh, click on one of the options that's popping up as that will allow it to be easily uh, choose a neighborhood. If we have our a Facebook URL for this, 
All we want to do is put the part that's after Facebook.com. You do not need to put in the full Facebook URL. You will also see that there's other additional uh, social media profiles for the person. Under the About section here, you have the option of adding a birthday and a home anniversary. Now, relationships work very well if you've added the first person in the um, into command first. So you would always typically create the second contact after you've added the first because it will start to uh, search for the contact. So I just search for a contact. What I'll see is I'll have one of the options of the previous people in my database there to uh, select as whatever relationship that I want to put. And there's probably about 20 different options here. Now one thing I notice is that you can add a uh, a work name or a job title, and these count towards your database health score. When you start typing in the company name, if you haven't created the company, what it will do is it will give you a drop down and it'll ask you to create the company. You want to make sure when you're creating the, that you have something typed in here before you click create a company because once you do that, this becomes grayed out and you're not able to, to type it in there. In this case, I'm just going to hit cancel. Uh, for sales pipeline, uh, I should put a lead source in here. This counts towards your database health. So there are probably about 20 different options here. These are not; these are the only options that are available unless you've imported in a different option. As far as custom, if you added any custom fields like we talked about previously, so for example, we talked about where how Ford shows up, county, township, and phone number, how they all show up in here and you can also add a custom field directly from here so I'm just going to click create and what will happen is that's going to create a contact in my database so after entering a contact we typically come back to the contacts screen here I've been seeing something happen a little bit different sometimes you get a window that pops up with some of the information but let's just say we come back to here and then we could search for the contact so in this case our contact was test what we'll notice is as we do this that this little menu potentially could can cover up our contact. So if you see that, just click on the little arrow there and we'll be able to see our contact. Once we're inside a contact, we'll be able to see their contact's health score. Now if you need to edit that, you can choose that option here by clicking on the pencil. We also have the option to archive and we also can add them to a smart plan directly from here. Now on the right hand side of what this is typically called a contact card, we'll see all these other options that we can do. So typically the timeline will show all their activity that they have done or, or any interactions you've done with them. If you've created an opportunity for them, you can click on this or need to create an opportunity. You can click on opportunities and we can create an opportunity right from here. When you do it this way, it automatically pulls in the person's contact information and assigns the opportunity for them. So it's a little bit easier than doing it directly from the opportunities section. If you wish to add them to smart plans, you can simply come and click to smart plans, click add to smart plans, and what we'll notice is that we'll have to typically go to smart plans library and see all the different smart plans that are available. And this one open house follow up is brand new. So we're just going to click X. We're not going to add this person into any uh, any smart plans. If I have tasks assigned, so for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a task for this person, and I'm going to say call, and I'm just going to pick today's date, and I'm just going to create a task for that person. I will see that that task is there. If I need to any add to any notes, All right, so I'm just going to add a note like that. And if I've done any, if I've launched my search and or they've set up searches or if I've set up saved searches, I will see that option here. I can also create a search uh, as well here. What I'll notice on the timeline is I'll see the different things that have happened. So for example, there's been a note created. I also have this plus sign in the bottom right hand corner that will allow me to add an activity, add a note, or add a calendar event, which will open up Google Calendar um, should I choose to use that option. So these are all the options directly in the contacts, in the, con in the contact section, in the individual contact card. When you're done, you can either click 
to go to the next contact if you had another contact in your list or you can just click back to contacts to go back to your contacts. So the next section we're going to cover is the tasks which is the third icon down. So when we added a task here for the previous on the previous uh, section there you'll see we have test contact right here. We'll see that we have a task that's due. We'll also see this right when we log into command we will see our tasks that are due and previous tasks if they're past due. So we'll notice directly on the screen when we log in here. So we're just going to go back to tasks here and clicking from the task tabs has some different uh, functionality that is not available directly on the main page. So you see here I can archive, I can snooze this, or I can mark this completed and I can hit complete task and the task has been successfully completed. Now if I have opportunity tasks these will be checklist items directly done in the opportunities applet. So for example I have one that says submit paperwork to market center. You will see that this is actually created from an opportunity checklist item so we'll talk about that in a little bit but I just want to point out if you're ever looking for a task by default it comes to contact tasks versus opportunity tasks and uh, just know that you have to toggle. Now by default it's always going to go to um, today's task versus um, you have the option of choosing what other time frame you want to look at them at. So the next thing that we'll notice down is smart plans and the best way to smart, use smart plans is to either start them directly from the individual contact or as we showed previously or do it from the contacts homepage here where you can easily add the smart plan to multiple people. When I click on smart plans, so for example here's how we would do it from the homepage here. I can just select as many contacts as I'd like. I get up to 25. I could come here and I can click add to smart plan, look in my smart plans library and see the different smart plans that are available. Now the standalone function here on smart plans you can see the engine that's developing so you'll have different smart plans that are available. Now if I click on here and click on library I can see the different steps that are in each smart plan. So for example here's the new open house one. I can see exactly what those steps are and then what I'll notice is that after they get done with this they're going to go to the long-term nurture which is over here and I can see all the different kind of added to the monthly neighborhood nurture so I need to have an address for the person and what we'll see. One thing we want to make sure that we do is before we so, so that we make sure that this smart plan our, our uh, launch properly. So we want to make sure that we complete this go to smart plan Kelly guide and follow all the instructions to get through there. What we'll notice is it will should have pulled all the information from our uh, marketing profile. I'll have to choose the market center name and if I have the social media so it's just basically a few uh, clicks here and that will allow us to configure that again if we haven't configured this reply to email address we can click configure here and add that and if we have Twilio and we want the automated text portions we can click configure here and that will allow us to make sure that the Twilio is which is the SMS service for texting is configured properly so once we're here we'll notice that we're in the smart plans we can choose if there's a smart plan that we want to add to somebody so I can click here and I can click which contacts I want I can do them all or not so I'm just going to add this person to the quarterly call plan there was a problem adding the contact sometimes you can add them through here if not, you can just come and click the X through here or just click Next and finish this up. So then that will make sure that all the, all the smart plans are 
correctly ready for you to launch and then um, your color guide will be completed. So we're going to click on the X in the top right hand corner and then we're going to move down to the next option here which is referrals. So if we click on referrals we will see our referral network here and if we need to find a referral the best way to do that is to click grow my network. And we can easily we can find people here. We can either search the map for um, a location, and what we'll see is we'll it'll pop up all the different agents who have sold a property. And if there's too many, like this case, we have to zoom in. We can zoom in by using the buttons on the bottom left hand corner here. So the more we zoom in, the more granular the data is. And we can rank those agents or see them ranked by these different items here. So whether it's production, so we'll see the different people. In this case, it's sorting them by random. It's looking at their production. And I can see all the areas based on where I'm zooming in on the map. Now, if I want to add a person, I would simply click on the little picture of a person with a plus sign, and that would add the person um, to your referral network. If I wanted to send them a, rever a referral, I would click on the little paper airplane here. If I'm curious on kind of what somebody is doing, I can or want some more information. If I click on their name and they filled out their profile, which is what we covered in initially, I will see all their information or not their information if they haven't filled it out. So if we're on somebody's profile, what we'll notice is that it has actually opened up a new window. If we click on this and we click go, but we'll actually go back to command. So I just wanted to show you that it shows my production by the market centers or the network. And we can sort that by the options that are over here. So that will show us um, exactly uh, what, the, what people have done in that specific area. And if I need to broadcast it, like I can broadcast a referral to these three people, I can click here, broadcast, and it will send them anonymously to all three people. They won't see it, but what I can do is I can put some specifics in there, and then they will send me back a, a uh, they'll tell me a little bit about themselves. They'll get to say, hey, there's a, uh, a referral request available. Are you interested? They'd click yes, and then they could send why. They might be the best agent for that. So in this case, I'm going to click cancel, but that's how you would send a referral to uh, one or more agents. So if you want to send it to one, you can simply do it there. If you click broadcast referral, it'll send it to um, up to 200 agents. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is opportunities. So let's click on opportunities. So now we're going to go through opportunities here. Well, we'll notice is when we click on opportunities, it shows us a view of our sales pipeline. And it will also predict our potential versus probable income. Potential income is if all the transactions that we have or all the opportunities that we have in here would close. Our probable is based on specific percentages that we've assigned, we, we have assigned. Now, in this case, I'm going to click on active. And what we'll notice is that we have different, these are called stages. Top options here are called phases, cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and closed. And those cannot be changed. The individual phases down here can be. And in order to do that, all we have to do is click on Edit Stage. And we can come and click on the pencil. And that will allow us to edit that particular one. We can click on the garbage can, which will allow us to delete it. And we can change the probability again by clicking the, pen clicking the pencil. So let's just say uh, the listing sign is 75%. And then that will change our income based on how many people that we have in there and the predictions that we've made there. Now we have this option of adding checklists right here. So you can see we have, in this case, get my MG broker signature, add <coughs> paperwork to MC, and then you'll see I have this option to add. And it's important that we do this correctly. So I could say, like, add to MLS. Now we have to do the double save option because if you don't, it won't save. So if you just try to click, here or you click out there it might be create a problem you'll have to redo it so you want to make sure you click save and then click save again and then that will save that specific checklist item there and these are 100 percent editable so i can add a new stage right here 
I wanted to add a, add a new stage, I can choose what position I want it in, and I can change the probability. And this probability is of the probability of it closing. I can add my checklist items directly from here. And then when I'm done, I'm click Save. If I need to change the order, I can simply just go drag them up or drag them down, however I want to do, however I want to change that specific order. I can do that very easily from here. What I find to get back to that sales pipeline view, I just come over here and click on sales pipeline or click on opportunities and that will take me back. Now I particularly like to keep to use the opportunity or create the opportunity directly from the uh, contact card, but if you don't, you can simply come over here and click on create opportunity and that will allow us to create an opportunity. The only difference is you have to actually find the client in here. So you would have to search for the client right here. And the thing I want to pay attention to is this opportunity type. This is one of the only fields that cannot be changed. So I want to make sure I pick one of the correct, uh, one of the correct four options here, whether it's a listing, buyer, landlord, or tenant, because that's going to make a difference on where it ends. Now I have to choose which phase by default. I can only go into these three phases, and I can move it um, afterwards manually if I have to. So I could put them in an active listing sign. I can click Create Opportunity, and that will create the opportunity. If I would have put it a listing price or a percentage, that would do that. After I create the opportunity, it will usually take me to the Details option here. Now, if I click on this pencil here, I can edit any of this information here. So if I come down here, I can click on Estimated Listing Price, and I can do the commission rate if I needed to change it. And again, this is just a general thing, so it may not be the specific commission rate, especially if you're charging a minus or a plus fee there. Again, it's just for prediction purposes. I'll click Save. And now I can see that that information has saved. But again, I cannot change the um, the uh, the type. So either I want to make sure I get that in as either a listing or a listing opportunity or a buyer opportunity. Once I'm in here, and I can get here at any time two different ways, by either coming to my opportunities clicking on the opportunities phase that it's in and then clicking on the name of the opportunity okay that will take me into the opportunities details page to continue with this I can click on documents and this will take me to where our office will look for compliance for documents if I click go to transaction that will take me into DocuSign if I have DocuSign set up so if I click on go to transaction it'll pop open a screen and then it will have me open and have me create a room in DocuSign now if you if you've also hooked up dot loop it will give you the option of choosing dot loop or DocuSign once you pick you cannot change for that specific transaction So again, after we would get all our documentation here, we can just click on Add File, and this would allow me, now I could select DocuSign, and if there was documents in here, I could select the specific documents that I needed, and then click Submit uh, to MC for Office Compliance. That's how the compliance is done through this here. What you can see is we have this option here for Offers, and we can add a new offer, and it will help us compare different if we have more than one offer, and or keep track of the offers that we've gotten. Now this is the basis for the green sheet replacement offers and commissions. So once this becomes integrated with Cloudmore, it will, will be able to easily do this directly from here because you can see the offers and the commission sections are already done there. If you're seeing a commission section that's not lighting up, it's because you haven't created an offer and then accepted the offer. Over here is a general notes section here where you can add a note. Um, if you are on a team right now, as far as I know, you cannot share team notes, or if one member of the team types a note, the others cannot see it. So just be aware of that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at campaigns. Once we're in campaigns, what we'll notice is that we have different campaigns. We have paid, email, direct, and social posts. And if we want to create a new campaign, we simply click on New. So if we see social posts, this one is free, so we can schedule our posts for our various social media channels. We'll also notice that we have direct mail, search ad, and our social ad. So this would typically be a Facebook ad, or Instagram, or potentially Twitter. 
This would be a Google AdWords. This would most likely be either a, uh, a Facebook post. Uh, direct mail. This would be a postcard that we could do through a company called Real Mailers. An email. I'm not sure that the email campaign is working right now. So those are um, how you would do that. You would just simply click on this and then you would follow the process to create an ad. Now, if you haven't added your social media profiles like on this demo account, you will see this. Otherwise, you'll get a pop-up that will allow you to schedule a post from there. The next option that we have here is we'll see the reports section here and we can see our, data, our overall database health score and the percentages of what we have. So we can see phone numbers, emails, addresses, neighborhoods, home anniversaries and birthdays. So this will show us kind of how, what information we have about a person or about our whole database and we can get an idea of the different options that we have. After that we're going to go into designs and designs is a, is a Canva like product that we're going to spend a little bit of time in. So click on designs that'll take you there. Okay so once you're here what you'll notice it says my design templates. What this really should be saying is my saved designs here because these are all the previous templates that you may have made. If you click on the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner, what you'll see is you'll have these different options. In this case, we're going to click on social and click on create design. Once we do this, it may ask us to log in uh, again. So we're going to log in and then we'll be taken to the design uh, platform. So once we logged, once we're logged into designs, what we'll notice on the left hand side is the different types of content. So for example, if I click on for sale, I will then see I have the option of doing Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Stories, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Also, brand new, what I'll notice is that I have to do, I have the option of doing agent sites. So now I can even see the site hero image options where that weren't previously available. Under business basics, what I'll notice is I'll have face covers, Facebook covers, LinkedIn covers, Twitter covers, and or email signatures that can be easily made and used for us. So first thing we're going to do in this case is I'm just going to pick a just listed postcard and I'm just going to click use this one that's all the way over on the right hand side I'm going to click on use and that's going to load this for me to start to customize and we're going to walk through the steps of customizing it if this is the first time you've logged into the design section the first thing I suggest you do is go to add to library when you come to add to library, you'll see that you have the details, the text, images, and logos. I would start off by adding the logos for your market center. Now, typically I find that there's three good logos for all Keller Williams market centers. One is the gray and black, one is the all white, and one is the red and black PNG. So all three of these files are PNG files with transparent backgrounds. Now you'll notice that you have a very hard time seeing the white one. So if you don't see the plus sign, that means that there is a uh, it, that means that there's a file that there's a, a picture there. So I don't need to do anything like that. So once you upload the, the the logos, you can then go to images and you can upload whether you have multiple photos and so forth. You have that option. You have backgrounds down here. You also have a brand kit if you have specific colors that you use in your business and or fonts. The text will pull specific text information that you may or may not want to use and the details is something that you should go back and make sure that you fill in the appropriate information because it seems like it misses the company name and address line so that's the first thing you should do in designs when you're done with that just simply click the X and then you're ready to start designing okay so once we've gotten the images in your library what you'll notice is that on the on the left hand side we'll see your images you'll see your logos that you've uploaded for for their and, and again, if you click on images, what you'll see if I click on company is I have stock images that are also available um, to be used here. And I can add additional images if I click the add option here, which we'll walk through here in a second. So here's a different stock foot, the different stock images that are available. So if I wanted to come here, I could just click on, click on this. This is the, the picture that I want to replace, let's say. I won't double click on it this time. So I click on it. I can just come over here and you see this option here. It gives me three options. I can use the image. I can replace the image or use the background. But if I just click replace image, it'll replace that image directly 
there, and that can be done anytime I select an item and I want to get it replaced. So for example, in this one, I'd probably want to replace my DBA logo. So if I came over here, I'm just going to click off of everything. And I'm going to click on the DBA logo, and then I come back to my logos. And if I hover over it, I can either add the logo. If I do that, it adds it directly into the center of the, of the um, design. If I need to get rid of it, I can either hit the delete key or I can hit the remove option in the top right hand corner. Now, several of you may not see the remove option. You may see a little arrow that looks something like this down here. And if you click on that, then you'll see the remove option. So I'm going to remove that particular item and I'm going to go back here where I select the logo. And then I can simply replace the logo and then I can move it wherever I'd like to, to do it. Now, one of the options we have here, since this is a just listed option, is here is we can come to the KWLS and we can search for a listing here. Now, it takes the search is a little finicky, and I find that the, the more information you add, the less likely you are to get the uh, correct results. So in this case, we're going to choose this particular listing here. And what we'll notice is it'll have all the listing photos from the MLS, or it should have all the listing photos from the MLS. Um, I can come here. I can select this particular photo right here. Again, I can hover over it and I can click on replace image. Now, additionally, I have the options where it says listing details here. So, for example, if I wanted to the property address, I could come over here and I could select the property address. And then I can come and I can simply just select the property address right here and I can make this bigger or smaller. So I can do all these different things here. If I ever want to, let's say, where's the schedule is showing with me, sometimes I find it's difficult to type directly in here. So I have the option that says typewriter up here, and that will allow me to type directly in here. It's a little bit easier than necessarily doing it inside the text box. When I'm done with this, I, I want to make sure that I save it. So I have the option of here's the file name right here, and I have the option of clicking File and Save, and that will save the design for me. When I'm done, I can also download it by clicking the Download icon right here. And I can choose whether I want a JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF. PDF would be um, perfect for a print marketing piece. This would be good for any place where I wanted a photo, such as a social media post. I can also use the Share option in the top right-hand corner, which will allow me to post to Facebook uh, LinkedIn and or Twitter directly from this. When I click on this, it'll open up another window to do that. Uh, I just want to point out that I also have the um, do the uh, back and the undo and then the redo options right here. So just understand that that's where that is here. When I get done with this, I can simply click done and that will ex exit me out of uh, designs. So the next thing down is listings, and this is going to be the KWLS 2.0. It may or may not be working in your area. It's currently in lab, so we're not going to spend uh, any time on that. After that, we have insights, which will allow you to either create or edit insights that you may have previously done here. So you can kind of come through here. You can click on Create New, and that will allow you to create an insight, and you can add the appropriate information and or uh, photos for that. Should you need to edit a edit a uh, option here or edit one of these, you, when you're in your account, you'll have the option of editing it. Since I'm in a demo account, I don't have any that I'm able to edit here. I'd be able to click on My Insights, and that should show me all the insights that I've created here. Now, the next thing we're going to work on is our website. So we're going to come down and we're going to click on the last option. Now, some of you might say sites, other people that might say landing pages. So we're going to click on the last icon on the bottom here. So once we're in the sites applets or sites applet, what we'll notice is that we have this option here that says learn more with Kelly Guide. So let's click on that and it will say as I will you choose the I want to use my new KW site. We'll click submit. And then we'll click get started and this will take us through the whole Kelly Guide option process. Initially you'll pick your domain here, and then again, it'll ask you for marketing profile information. What you'll notice is that it should have filled in all your information properly here. If something like your market center brokerage is incorrect, you'll need to add that directly into your in your marketing profile. If you find something didn't quite save properly, like your brokerage line 2 address, 
you might need to edit that. Uh, you do need to add your professional title here. And then you can kind of go through this whole marketing profile information and click click save and continue when you're done. I did notice that you should put the dashes here for the phone number here. This is the only place that I see that it doesn't add the dash, da dashes initially correctly. When you're done here, you can, and one of the things that you can do is where normally it had the, uh, the smaller logo, you can upload a full-size Keller Williams uh, logo there. It'll look a little bit better on your particular website. Again, you can add your whole full social media URL if it's not there. Uh, you may need to add the HTTPS in front of it. We'll click Save and Continue. And then we hit the uh, we get to the different themes. So right now there's a dark theme and a red theme. So what you'll notice on the dark theme is I notice like the KW up here changes. So I like to use the red theme. And if I want to change this text item here, or what was called the home page text, I can do that by editing the information right here. I also have, this is the image on the back here, is called the hero image. So if I want to edit the hero image, I can choose, well there's five options here, I can either delete some of these options or I can upload my own, but I can only have five of them. And I know it says the recommended size is 1200 by 1200, I find that the real size is 1200 by 900, so it's not, a, not quite a square. So you can delete these, um, you can also upload uh, your own designs should you wish to do that. When you're done, you'll click Save and Continue. And then you'll have the options that by default, if we look at our navigation, we get three pages. We get a company profile and about me to contact us. Now these can be edited. They do not have to stay. The company profile does not have to stay the company profile. You can make it into something else. So if I come over here, I'm just going to, right now we're on the company profile page. I'm going to do the search engine optimization. This is going to be the page title, right? That, and that's what's going to show in our menu here. And the SEO description is what Google is going to display if someone finds that page on Google. This is what Google will display. I, the slug will be the, the link name, so you see demomc, kw.com, slash about us. Then we get down to the content section. Now the thing to understand is that if this particular template limits the amount of text you can put in here. So you might want to make sure that the text, you don't have too long of a text to do that, otherwise you will run into an option, you will run into uh, needing to edit it because it will only allow a certain amount of characters. Now keep in mind that this says headline one, section one headline, and the paragraph, and section one photo is right here, or section one image is right here. Notice that that's after, we're actually adding that up after the section one um, information. So that's the section one uh, photo here. So just keep that in mind, it's not up front of it. So again, we have the section two, which is the information over here. We have the footer, uh, headline and description, and we can come down here and we can click continue and that will take us to the next page here. What we'll notice is that again, we've got the page title, the slug, the SEO content, or the SEO description, and then we have the, the other content here. Okay, what we'll notice is that because this contact phone number doesn't have the dashes, it's showing up here, we don't need to edit it. Here, if we have our bio, it'll be shown here. If we have coming soon, it'll just show that. I'll click next to the, to the next page here. And what we'll notice here is again, same thing. We have a page title our slug, our SEO description, then we have our content. And what I noticed here for the phone number here is that I have to add the dashes in so that it adds it down here. Okay, in addition, you'll see this contact page by text optional. So you wanna make sure you edit that so it just doesn't say that. I can click save and continue. And then it says I've, I've now successfully um, launched this or configured the site. One thing you need to check if your site has not launched, because I see sometimes we do this and sometimes there's an issue when we come over to agent site settings over here in the top right hand corner, we want to make sure that the slider is green and that that will then launch your site for you. So what you'll notice after you've edited your site, you'll notice that if, if it's done correctly, when you go to your subdomain here, that you'll see the KW Momentum or your whatever logo you've uploaded here. In addition, you will see your agent or whatever the item is up here, and you'll see this drop-down menu here. If you scroll down to yours and you're not seeing your branding here, 
and you just have a, a generic KW site, that's probably because that last step with activating the agent site profile, that little slider that we talked about, has not uh, been activated properly. Now, I have seen a time delay, so it might take a few minutes for this to work. But after this, you should be all set up with your sites here. And that's pretty much a decent um, overview of command and what you can do with it. So thanks for tuning in if you've made it this far.